Good evening and welcome to our midnight service. Um, that service that happens as a very first start, um, a heralding Christmas day and the remembrance, the worship of Jesus as he is born into our world. And we're going to think about who Jesus is through the words of John 1, that very well-known passage which declares that he is the word and he has come as flesh. So Chris will read that to us later and we'll think about what that means for us, what that says, what the what it, there's a lot of mystery involved in that passage and it's a, a wonderful passage. So we'll think about that later. We're going to light Advent candles and we've got an agape meal. So I hope you've got food ready for that. And um, yeah, I just looking forward to this service and I thank you for joining me whatever time of day or night you have accessed this video. So we're going to be quiet and then I'm going to light our advent candles. You can see I've got my Chris Dingle here from earlier and that um, was good. And then this is my kind of advent wreath. Um, I'm not going over to church this evening and um, we'll light the advent candles in church tomorrow morning when we live stream our service from there but I've got four uh, four outside candles um, for love joy hope and peace and I've got this middle one which is my candle for standing for Jesus the light of the world and we will light all five of them this evening as we um, start Christmas day so we have some words to help us with that. Let's just take a moment of quiet and I'll pray for us and then lead us through the words that take us through these candles before we sing. Lord, I thank you that we can be with you this evening. I thank you that you are our King and our Lord. And I thank you that as we worship you tonight, that you are with us present in our homes, present with us in all that we face, present with us in whatever kind of Christmas and year we have had and are having and will have. So we thank you for that. And as we come to you to worship you this evening, to look for your presence and to remember that you came to us as we are, would you bless us and help us to know your love with us this evening. Amen. So, first of all, we light our four outside candles for uh, hope and peace and joy and love. May remind us ourselves, we remind ourselves in those of the hope, peace, joy and love that is contained in Jesus who comes to us at Christmas. So let us pray. Love shine, your moment has come. In the dark of the womb you waited, bathed in the balm of the star you rest. Into a world sorely in need of your light, you are born. When you knock on our door, looking for room, May we welcome you. We light the Christ candle. May it light the way. Like the angelic herald of your birth, call us to share your good news first with those who are poor, excluded and afraid. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot put it out. The love of heaven has come to earth. Hallelujah. And we're going to sing, what child is this? So as we sing these words, just let them be ones that resonate um, about your own questions and your own understanding of Jesus. Let's sing together. What child is this who leads to thee? 
Thank you, Rosemary and John. I love that song. So thanks for sharing that with us and enabling us to sing with you. We're going to take a moment of quiet and then we're going to use the words of confession for Christmas midnight. So let's be quiet and bring to our God the darkness of our own hearts and the darkness of our world so that his light may shine into that darkness. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. Let us then, in the light of Christ, confess our sins. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're having an agape meal as part of our service this evening so I hope you've got um, something uh, Christmassy I've got a cup of tea and some wafer biscuits which I love so this is my Christmas beginning of Christmas food so I hope you've got something whether it's a glass of wine or something else to help you into Christmas day and 
as we take our food this evening, we take it in recognition of all your good gifts to us, Lord, especially that of our life in Jesus. We give thanks and pray. Lord, each day as we wait on you, you strengthen our hearts and provide for us. So if you take your food and your drink and we hold them up. Bless now we ask this food and drink and this time together as we remember who you are and acknowledge your risen presence with us. Amen. We're going to have the reading now and that will be brought to us by Chris Parsons. And then after that, we're going to watch a video, which is another form of taking in this reading. There's an awful lot in it. It's a reading of great mystery. So I thought both the red, red word from the scriptures itself and then a video that um, just brings that word in a slightly different form to us, although true to the biblical text would be helpful tonight. So as we engage with this reading, let's just let God speak to us. Chris. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and we have seen his glory. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading is taken from John chapter one, verses one to 14. The word became flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Thank you, Chris. And I hope that video spoke to you, that it wasn't too shocking, but also brought the glory of God into your thoughts and prayers. And as we proclaim our faith in Jesus Christ this evening, we're going to use words from that reading and from Philippians 2. So we proclaim the church's faith in Jesus Christ. We believe and declare that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is both divine and human, God of the being of the Father, the only Son from before time began, human from the being of his mother, born in the world, fully God and fully human, one human person with mind and body. As God, he is equal to the Father and the Spirit, one with them. As human, he is less than the Father and the Spirit. Although he is both divine and human, he is not two beings, but one Christ. One, not by turning God into flesh, but by taking humanity into God. Truly one, not by mixing humanity with Godhead, but by being one person. For as mind and body form one person, so the one Christ is both divine and human. The word became flesh and lived among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. As we explore these words of mystery, of humanity and Godhead together, of being one, fully God and fully human as one person, as we explore what that means, as we explore these words, we will also explore that means for us. So before we do that, I'm going to take a pause to just let these things settle so far, and then I'll lead us through this passage. Let's take a break. Let's take a moment of quiet. let's pray. Lord, these mysteries are beyond us, but they're not beyond you. You are these mysteries. So as we think about this, help us to know your wisdom, your wisdom theologically and biblically, but also practically and in our lives for who we are and for who those around us are. Help us to grow more fully into you this evening as we explore who you are as God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus and Christ, fully God, fully human, one being amongst us. Amen. So it's dark outside and as I record this, it's not only dark, it's cold and it's wet. It's a bit blustery. Took Poppy for a walk this um, earlier and it's not a nice evening to be out and about. I believe Christmas Day too, so I gather, will be better spent inside, preferably before an open fire, with food and drink, family and games, the warm glow of Christmas surrounding us. I don't know about you, but I think most of us like to create for ourselves a joy and comfort of well-being, of being well with, it, with us and in us and around us. But we've seen firsthand this year anything but well-being. We've seen the stress of living surrounded by danger, fear, panic, disease, death and tragedy. The stress levels of people, the higher incidence of suicide, depression and anxiety. The fear of going out or being with others. We don't deal with these things that fracture our community and our friendships and our love for others. We don't deal with these things as our constant environment well. 
we are not as resilient often or as strong or capable as we wish we were. We envy people who seem to be and fail to notice the cracks as we fall into our own. So I'm glad I have good news for you tonight. I can tell you that you are okay. You are held and safe. You can put aside fear and stress. You can do that because God has you. He has come for you. He knows you. And whilst the darkness in and around you may not recognize God, it can't exclude him either. God, the creator of all things, came as a human being, born as a baby, and grew up just as we did, through all the struggles and challenges of childhood, adolescence, and early adulthood, before going public with his identity. Jesus is the word, the originating thought and conscious decision of God to create all things, all nature and all beings, spoken out and so coming into being. It was through him, the word, who became Jesus, through his speaking, that all things were created and for him too. Because he created all things, he therefore owns all things that are created, including you and me. He made us and therefore knows us inside out. But not only does he know us factually, he has learnt to understand us, partly and because he's God and partly through his experience as a human being. But was it only that, an experience for the sake of getting to know us? Kind of like a placement to get to see what being human was like. Well, of course not. It was far deeper than that. He didn't just come to look like to look like some objective observer. He came to be human. He came to be one alongside us, to share our worries and concerns, our joys and struggles, our pain and delight. He came to know our temptations, our deceptions, our prejudices, our hatreds, our jealousies, our carelessness, our ignorance, our judgments, as well as our forgiveness, kindness, gentleness, compassion, restraint, faithfulness. He came to know how we live and grow, mature and develop, bleed and die. He came to know how we envy, fear, grieve, desire, lust, love, care, protect, nurture and bless others. He knew pain and tiredness, frustration and sadness, love and companionship, family life and friends, good food, good wine and good times, as well as times of greater challenge when judgment and hatred and fear soured all that may have been offered. He was, is human, and he is also God, divine and holy. And the fact that red blood ran in the veins of God and could therefore spill out is our saving grace. Many religions recognise and even honour Jesus for his social conscience, teaching, lifestyle, attitude. But only Christians recognise Jesus, human, as God divine. For most, that is a blasphemous claim. Recognize, uh, heresy of the highest order. Denying his glory, power, majesty and divinity. Demeaning and diminishing God by equating him with base humankind. But as I've reflected on this divide between Christianity and other religions, I wonder how anything can ever demean or diminish God. Is he not so great, so far beyond us, that even in human form, even as a criminal on the cross, he is exalted and above us all? And if he created humankind, then are we not his good creation, designed to be a blessing and joy to him and his created world? Why then would he not treasure and cherish us in our humanity, created by him and blessed by him? In that love, then, he comes and meets us where we are as humans, as people. God does not expect us to become like him before he deigns to look upon us. Instead, he comes to us as we are and holds our hand, walks with us, loves and nurtures us, comforts and strengthens us. He can't be diminished in living out the love he holds for his people. 
And instead of him being dragged down to our level, we instead are lifted up to his. He cannot be made sinful or dirty or unholy or evil. But we can, by his power and authority, be made clean, pure, holy and good. The red and very human blood in his veins was spilt so that we could be raised up. Blood is an ancient life force, enabling life to flourish and in its spilling, causing death. Jesus' blood was spilt. He did die. And in that death, all the wrongness of humankind, all the sin that he had encountered in his present, foresaw as the future unrolled, watched from heaven in the past, it all became his. Paul tells us that the wages of sin are death. And Jesus was killed, his blood was spilt to allow the sin of all humankind in all time and space to die, be vanquished and then redeemed. But Jesus is holy, set apart, love incarnate, the creator, the word that brought all life into being. And so death can't own him. Darkness can't put him out, can't destroy him any more than sin can. But with his death, our sin dies, and in his life we then live. His blood spilt becomes the red blood running in our veins as we live eternally with him. The sight of blood being spilt is shocking, I know, but the blood from God's own human life is the life of our eternal survival in and with him. God's own human lifeblood is our life. And so we give thanks for that blood spilt in our name. Jesus was not destroyed by human form or death. Instead, we, you and me, are exalted, lifted high by him forever. His love compelled him to create. It compelled him to come to be with us. It compel, compels him today to live with us if we will choose him. And it asks us to live eternally for and in and with him as we look to him day by day and forever. So, whose face are your eyes on? Your own, your loved ones or Jesus? Who do you live for with and in day by day? Will you live by your own strength or let Jesus raise you up in his way? Will you accept his gift of life and love today, this Christmas? You can choose that gift of life and love because God has come for you. You are okay. You are held and safe. He knows you and loves you and desires for you to choose him. The darkness in and around you has and will die by the death of Jesus and leave you to be raised up in him eternally, to live with him in the fullness of love and joy. So I hope that this Christmas you can keep your eyes on Jesus, that you can know a greater measure of his love and his life, his healing, his strength and his comfort, that you will know his blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. And as we contemplate these words and God's words to us through them, we're going to stop talking and we're going to sing. We're going to let the music speak to us and speak to God from us. We're going to sing Silent Night, Holy Night. So sing along if you wish to, or just let this time be a time for reflection and your own thoughts. But John Rosemary, lead us in song. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, from yon virgin mother and child. Oh, Infant so tender and kind, sleep in heavenly peace.
The response to on this holy night is, we pray to you, O Lord. Let us pray. On this holy night in which God joins heaven and earth, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world and all those who are in need. Eternal God, in the stillness of this night, you sent your only son to pierce the darkness with the light of salvation. Give to the earth the peace that we long for and fill our hearts with the joy of heaven through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. We pray for the church and for all Christians throughout the world as we celebrate the birth of Christ. Bless all those who are entrusted with Christian ministry so that your word might be proclaimed with truth, courage and faith. Bestow your wisdom on all who govern, that in honouring the earth and its diverse races, cultures and religions, we may celebrate the light of this holy night, so that all peoples may be reconciled and live in love and peace. On this holy night, we pray to you, O Lord. We pray for all who are cold, hungry, or alone this night. Embrace with your tender care all who need you, all who wander alone, or have no place to lay their head. And may they experience the hope of this holy night. We pray for all who are anxious, depressed, or ill. Draw near to those who find this season a source of pain or grief and to all who are suffering or sick in any way. And we bring to mind all those who we remember in our own hearts. We pray that all may feel the comfort and love of this holy night. On this holy night, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, this has been a difficult year and many have felt the pain of loss. So Heavenly Father, we give thanks for all of our loved ones and from whom we are parted this Christmas. Give us grace to entrust those who have passed before us into your tender, loving care and know that they are at peace with you in your heavenly kingdom. On this holy night, we pray to you, O Lord. We pray for our families, friends and neighbours. Strengthen us all in the bonds of love and commitment so that homes might be places of joy, love and peace. We pray for ourselves and for the blessings of Christmas time. Open our hearts to your presence 
so that we may be transformed by the new birth of this holy night. On this holy night, we pray to you, O Lord. May God grant unto us his love and his grace, so that we might serve him and share his love and compassion to our world, allowing the light of God to illuminate the dark places with grace and truth. Do we bring all these prayers together and pray together the prayer which our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jackie, thank you for our prayers. That's brilliant. And we're going to share the peace with each other now. So you may want to be able to share the peace of the Lord with others, with you, um, as we do this and use your hands. So let's share the peace with each other. This holy night, the angels sang, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to all in whom he delights. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We're going to sing for the last time this evening, Joy to the World. We have much to be joyous about um, in our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's sing together. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her peace. you John and Rosemary for those songs they are such good songs we've sung this evening so thank you so much for them before we go on to whatever the rest of this evening holds for you whatever that might be you might be going straight to bed you might have other things that you're going to do you might still be early enough to play games or enjoy each other's presence and company if you're with family but before we do that we're going to have a final prayer of blessing which we'll say together and then we'll go our separate ways. So may the Father who has loved the eternal Son from before the foundation of the world shed that love upon you. Amen. And may Christ who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly fill you with joy and peace. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit by whose overshadowing Mary became the God-bearer give you grace to carry the good news of Christ. Amen. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us and all whom we love now and forever. Amen. So go in peace. Proclaim the word made flesh. Glory, thanks, and praise to God. Have a wonderful Christmas. Enjoy yourselves however you are celebrating and stay safe, take care, and I will see you in the new year. Goodbye. God bless. Bye.